Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're do out doing some estate sales today. Um, I've already done one. I uh, couldn't really film in there or anything. The house was absolutely packed. I wound up getting there early because I thought it started at 9, but it didn't start until 9.30. So I stood in line and the line went down the sidewalk. I mean, it was there was a lot of people out today. I think everybody's just kind of jonesing to be able to get out and do some estate sales because there haven't been any really good ones here lately. But there's a little pink sign right back there you can see. We're going to go to this estate sale. Thanks a lot, airplane. And uh, we're going to go check it out and see if we can't find some really good stuff. I found a few things at the last one, but I'll update you and let you know what I found later. All right, let's go see. Okay, well, that estate sale was dismal. They had almost nothing in there. It looked better in the pictures. They did a good job with the pictures on it. But we're going to go on to the next one and see if we can't find something. That's right. The woman's <laughs> Me, I'm sweating. Sometimes doing estate sales is hard work. Those of you that do furniture know what I'm talking about. This estate sale, I found a uh, magazine collection. So I'm going to show you what I got here real quick. This is a magazine collection for woodworking. I got Woodsmith, I got American Woodworker magazines, I got Shop Notes. All these magazines. They go for pretty good money when you bundle them together. I've got three stacks here. I probably got over 200 magazines and I paid $35 for the whole thing. So a lot of money to be made here. All right, on to the next estate sale. Okay, so first up, uh, I went to an estate sale and I, I bought a few things um, and I was walking out the door and on the uh, credenza right there in the hallway, there were these three Zippo rules that were sitting there in the box. So I opened them up. They wanted $5 a piece for them. And uh, they are, I don't know if you can see that with the light on it, Linux. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Eh, maybe not. But anyway, you can see the Linux on there. Linux heating and air. Uh, probably from the 60s or 70s, if I had to guess, just based on what the box looks like. I uh, got three of them. I paid $5 a piece. I'm going to shoot for $25 a piece on these. I don't think I'll get it. I think I'll get between 18 and 20, but I'm going to start a little bit high and see, just kind of see what happens. Um... You need to, if you're not already, you need to be watching other YouTubers that uh, that can teach you how to, what to look for when you go to auctions, estate sales, garage sales, everything. The more you know, the better you're going to be and the more things you're going to be able to make money on. Um, now, I've, if one of the videos, if you look close, you can see these in the video and uh, that was why I videoed that was so that, that you could see them. And I was watching the auction professor, professor, and he was talking about finding erasers. And he said, you'll find these at estate sales. And I thought, I don't know that I've ever seen erasers in an estate sale. So two days later, when I went to the estate sale, I found these erasers. I paid $2 for them. You can see on there, I paid $2. Uh, and these have been used. They're not mint. If you look at the little yellow one, it's got a little black spot on the back of it. Um, but they have not been used very much. Probably for the two of them, 18 to 20 free shipping is what I'm guessing. Um, but I paid $2 and they'll ship first class. So it's kind of a no brainer. Uh, one thing you will find at garage sales and estate sales is you will find old flip phones. You would not think these would be worth a whole lot of money, but some of them really can be. 
Now, some of them are not, but you need to look them up. Well, I dropped that one. Uh, that was a Samsung phone. Um, the best one that I got was I got this Motorola Razor. And it's hard to see, but the screen is on. It does work. There you go. Uh, I got the cord with it, and I paid $2 for it. This will probably sell $35 to $40 on eBay. Somebody out there <coughs> wants a... Uh, wants a red razor phone uh, to replace the one that they broke or or whatever uh, one thing I took a chance on is this IBM micro cassette player it was two dollars I've never seen an IBM model before um, I haven't tested it yet but the battery compartment on it uh, was clean because it uses a 9 volt battery most of these use double A's. This particular one uh, uses a 9 volt and it was made in Japan. So I'm betting this is probably from the 70s just based on how thick it is, how big it is. Maybe early 80s, but I'm betting it's probably uh, from the 70s. It has an IBM logo on it right there and it also has it stamped into the back of the phone, IBM. Comes with a case, came with a IBM cassette for it. So uh, I will test that, make sure it works. There are no comps. Um, I, I don't know. I'm probably going to put $50 on it and start there. Um, these, this size, if you get a Radio Shack model or something like that, usually go for around 18 to 25. But because it's IBM, I'm going to start at 50 and come down from there. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. I found a Super Powers penguin figure that I paid a dollar for. He also came with a little red umbrella, which is not his original umbrella. But I will put it with him anyway, because I don't need the umbrella. But the thing, the reason I bought him to resell was because... He had the tails on the back, and those tails are removable. The tails alone will sell for $12 on eBay if you can find those. He's a figure with the tails. He does have the wrong umbrella. If he had the correct one, he would be about 20 but uh, he's in really nice condition. So I'll probably get, I'm going to say, $15 to $18 for him. Uh, and... I like that kind of stuff, so I, it doesn't bother me to pick it up and, and sell it, even if I'm not making a whole lot of money on it. He'll, he'll ship first class. Uh, I took some video of a bunch of swizzle sticks that I bought, and I will add a picture in here somewhere uh, of the lot that I got. Um, these are in that lot. These are swizzle sticks for drinks. They are all, all of these are from the uh, uh, 50s and 60s. Now, I actually had to do a little research on these. These are Arawak. They got a palm tree on them, bamboo, stem. Uh, they are plastic. Uh, Arawak, I think, was a bar in the Bahamas. Um, and it was kind of hard to find, but I had a bunch of other swizzle sticks that were from the Bahamas, so it kind of gave me a clue of where to look. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I got... Like, I think I got 11 of these of the Arawak. But I, I've i got probably 25 or 30 lots that I listed on eBay of different swizzle sticks um, that would sell. In fact, I paid $20 for all the swizzle sticks. And I sold four of them that had a devil motif. And I'll show that one on here too. Uh, and it sold for $25 free shipping. So I've already paid for the for the swizzle sticks. Now it's all profit from here. Um, and I had another sale of one of the Skull Halloween ones. And I sold that one for 30 So uh, the very first estate sale I went to, I only found three things. But they were really cool, so I couldn't pass them up. First up is a Planet of the Apes thermos. I'm probably going to put about 40 to 50 on this. It's in really good condition. It does have the original black top on it and it has the lid so this is from 1973 i believe 
and uh, 1974. It's from 1974, and probably I don't know, 40 to 50 dollars. I think. I think that's. I mean, if I get a little less for it, I paid five dollars for it. So if I get a little less for it, that'll be okay. Um, the other two things I found were, uh, I found a timetable for uh, Pickwick Greyhound lines, and then I found a souvenir guide for New Orleans. Uh, the souvenir guide does appear on eBay, and it sold for eight dollars shipped. I think I paid a dollar a piece. But that one was from 1931. This one is from 1929. Yeah, 1929. Uh, let's see if I can show that to you. 1929. And it has a hype sticker on it for the Steamer JS Deluxe. So uh, I'm going to start this at $25 is what I'm going to do. And we'll see what happens with it. It's a really cool souvenir. From 1929. The Pickwick Greyhound lines is also from 1929. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you're going to. It's not going to focus on that. I don't think. Let's see. Nope. I can't get it to focus. So I looked on eBay. I cannot find this particular one. I looked on Google. I can't even find a picture of it. The ones that I did find are mostly black and white and uh, just text. They don't have really cool picture, like a really cool picture or anything on that. Um, these Pickwick at the time in 1929 had uh, overnight coaches and they actually had beds in them that you could sleep in and they would take you um, to different cities. You would sleep overnight and then when you woke up, you had arrived in the city. So this was when pickwick was still around now pickwick went out of business in 1931 i think don't quote me on that i think it was like 1931 it wasn't very long after this uh, they because of the great depression um they pickwick line was gotten rid of and then it just became greyhound so i don't know on that one i think i'm going to start it at 35 dollars and we'll kind of see what happens on that. I went to another estate sale, couldn't find anything in this estate sale. And I went up to the front just to kind of look in the little case that they had. And sitting beside the case was this little game. Now, if you look at that game, it's kind of hard to see, but it's all written in Russian. And I didn't know what the game was, but I knew this style. This style is called game game watch game and watch is what it's called made by nintendo the russian ones i don't believe were made by nintendo i don't know who made the the ones that were that came out of russia uh it did not have batteries in it which is actually a good thing because the battery compartment is very clean there's no corrosion in it whatsoever and uh this particular model is a chef model it has a kitchen motif on it it's kind of hard to see but um so if it works this one is probably worth around 60 to 75 dollars so i found that i asked her how much she wanted for it she wanted five dollars for it and i said okay i'll take that and i decided to take one more look around because i actually found something and i walked over to a table and this one was sitting on a table across the room now this is an actual Nintendo Game & Watch. And uh, I'm not real sure what the game is. I'm gonna have to do some research to find out. But it had the exact same thing. The, the batteries were not in it. Battery compartment is very clean. So whoever, whoever had these took real good care of them. It does have a little dent in the front, but really that doesn't matter. This particular one, uh, oh, it's called Parachute. That's what it is. So. It says parachute up there at the top. This one will sell for around $50 to $60 if it works. I have ordered batteries. I don't have this size battery. Uh, I have a bunch of watch batteries, and that's what this uses. But this particular size I did not have, so I had to order batteries for it, so I can't test it yet. Okay. Uh, 
while I was finding the phones that I showed you, there was a little tub that was beside this TV, and I rummaged around in this tub, and I found a Sony Walkman. Now, if you look at that Sony Walkman, it's really thin. This is a very thin Sony Walkman. This model is a WMF-102, and I've actually had this model before, and it was a gold color. This one is black. Now it's got a piece of tape on it because the glue has come off on this little piece right here where right there and uh i'm either gonna have to re-glue it or i'm gonna have to let people know that that it's like that the last one i sold for 50 dollars and it did not work because the uh the belt on it was bad on this one i have the exact same problem it does work i can hear the motors running but I think the belt is bad, so it, it's not doing anything. So I have on eBay found the belt, and I ordered the belt, and it cost me, I want to say, $9 to get the belt. So I've ordered the belt. The belt is on the way. It's coming from Slovenia or something like that, and I don't expect to see it for a couple of weeks. But then when I get it, I will take this apart and see if I can't change out the belt. Why am I going to do that? Well, because if it sells, if it works, it will sell for around $150 to $175. If it doesn't work, then I can still get $50 in parts. So I don't lose anything except the price of the belt if, uh, I, if it doesn't work and I can't change the belt because I can still sell it for parts. So... All right, the well, next thing I found was an Astroworld mug. Now, this Astroworld mug right here is really cool. It's got the log ride on it, and then it's got the old cars on the back. So, it is a really cool Astroworld mug. There is no mark on the bottom, so there's no date or anything like that. I cannot find this exact mug on eBay anywhere, so I don't know what year it's from. Um, but there's not another one on it, uh, on eBay. So, um, I don't know. Mugs can be really great or not so good. We'll see how this does. Um, I'm probably going to put 25 to $30 on it and, and, uh, just kind of let it ride for a few weeks and then I'll drop the price if I have to. Okay. Next thing I got was this polo. Now, the reason I bought this polo and I paid $4 for it is because it has that winged R67 on it. There is one listed on eBay right now. It is a hoodie. It's got the hood on it. And it's got the string. It's in great shape. It was a little dusty, but there's no stains or anything. No rips, no tears, no holes, no money. Is there any money? No, no money. Um... So, uh, there's one listed on eBay right now for $99. I don't know if it'll sell for that, but for six bucks, I decided to take a chance and see. Uh, I don't do a lot of clothing, but I do clothing whenever I think it might make sense. So, uh, next thing I got was, I got some woodworking magazines. I went to an estate sale. It was the only thing I bought at that estate sale. And they were, there was about 200 magazines. Woodworking magazines, because they're a specialty item and woodworkers want them, the thing about these uh, magazines is they have plans inside to build the stuff that they show on the cover. So uh, woodworking magazines can be good. Um, I actually... I'm a woodworker, although I haven't done it in many years because I don't have a shop anymore and all of my tools are in storage. But at the time, I was collecting wood magazines and I still have a huge collection of wood magazines. In fact, I've got a couple that are first editions um, of some of the woods magazines and I've had all of these before. Um, now, they don't go for a lot of money and my initial uh, thought was, that I wanted to go ahead and sell them in lots. 
I thought that would be the best way to do it. And I didn't really look them up because I was like, wood magazines. I know woodworking magazines sell. Well, after doing some research, they don't sell so well in lots. Um, there's lots listed, but not many lots sell. So it seems like woodworkers want individual issues. Now, whenever I was buying them, I would go to half price books or something like that. I would clean out the, the woodworking magazines that they had and buy 15, 20 of them at a time. So I guess I was kind of an anomaly and people don't really do that. They want certain issues probably for something that they want to build. I was just trying to get ideas at the time. So how am I going to sell these? I don't know yet. Uh, I may sell them individually, but listing 200 magazines at 5 to $8 a piece just really isn't my style. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, I did get a VCR. Actually, I got two VCRs. I got a Sony and a Magnavox. Uh, the Magnavox is not in here, so I can't show you that one, but it is a DVD recorder. This Sony is a DVD VCR. Um, it is a uh, just a regular standard VCR, but I only paid $12 for it, and it came with the remote. So it sells for uh, around $80 to $100, $100 shipped. So it's usually like listed for 80 and then $20 for shipping because it'll cost at least $20 to ship it. Um, but I only paid $12 for it and I don't have to buy a remote for it. The Magnavox that I got, uh, like I said, is a DVD recorder. So if I get the remote for it, I think I can get 175 to 200 for it. I paid $10 for it. And the remote is probably going to cost me 20 bucks. It looks like that's what they're going for on eBay. So I'm not real happy about the price of the remote because usually I like to spend around seven to ten dollars for them. But we'll see how that ends. All right, last up, I believe, I think this is the last thing I got, is comic books. So we're going to talk a little bit about comic books. Um, I saw in the ad for the estate sale that there were Golden Age comics. Now I am a comic collector. In fact, I got some comics up for sale right now that are from my collection. Um, right uh, at this time, I am not collecting. I am trying to get rid of some stuff. But uh, so I know comics. I know what to look for. But I quit collecting in the mid 90s. So anything after that, I'm not up on. Golden Age, I never really collected. Everything I collected was Silver Age. But I do know basic comic. I have basic comic knowledge on some of that stuff. And so. I went in, they had a Batman comic. One of the things I do collect are Golden Age Batman comics when I can find them. Um, I have a few, and there was one that was a number 37 that was at the sale. So I went in to see just how much they were going to ask for it. And they wanted $300 for a comic that was probably 70 bucks. It was in such bad shape. Um, but the lady told me, she said, we got another box of comics over there you can go through if you want to. So I said, okay. So actually there was two boxes and I went through both boxes and there could have been some better stuff in there. I don't really know. Like I said, I'm not that knowledgeable in Golden Age, but I did pick out a couple that I decided to buy and I actually paid up for one of them. Um, this one is an Archie comic. It is number 58. Uh, um, I could probably tell you the year if I open it up and take a look it is from 1952 it's not in too bad a shape for an Archie um, it is probably in about a VG condition if I had to guess I'm not a professional grader don't don't uh, quote me on that but I paid five dollars for the Archie comic um, now the cool thing is that this Archie in this condition should sell for about 140 to 150 dollars so that was a that was a really good find okay then I picked up this one this is a Mr. Mystery number 13 and the thing about it is that it is a it, it's called head dipped in acid is what they call it in the uh, guidebook this particular one is from 1953. 
Um, it's a horror magazine, or a horror comic. And I paid $20. I paid up for this comic. It is all here. I have checked it. Um, it is also in probably a VG condition. And in VG condition, there is one listed right now on eBay for $1,200. That does not mean that's what it's going to sell for. I don't know what this comic actually sells for because I can't find comps on it because it's a very rare comic. Um, this comic was reissued, which probably accounts for the $20 price tag at the estate sale. I think they didn't know whether it had been reissued or not, so they were better safe than sorry because they don't want to get in trouble. Um, but I knew it was real, so I picked it up and I paid, um, I paid $20 for it. This comic in this condition, I think is worth between $800 and $1,000. So that was the best find that I had. And I will be selling it, but I don't know. I haven't decided yet if I want to send it off to have it graded or not. Um, but I may do that. I may have it graded. Okay, now we're going to talk about some other comics that I picked up that you would probably walk right past. You wouldn't even take a look at them because you would think they were total trash. So, we have a Batman comic here that is missing the cover. There is no cover, front or back. Okay? This is a number 73. Batman number 73, without a cover. In this condition... I will still probably get 50 bucks for it. it I paid $2 for all the ones that did not have covers. Um, the next one I got was an Action Comics. But I didn't pay that close attention because I was just kind of grabbing stuff. It's, if it said Action Comics or it said Batman or Detective, I grabbed it. Anything else, I left there. So... Um, the problem with this action comic is that it's not complete. It's not anywhere near complete. It's missing so much stuff. It's probably only worth the $2 that I paid for it. So that one was kind of a bust. There was a Detective Comics. It had the same problem that it's missing so much that I don't think it's really worth anything. I, this one may have the centerfold, so it may be worth it for the centerfold. But, um, again not worth that much adventure comics same deal not worth that much because it's missing too much so there was two four six dollars that i wasted but then i got that one this is a batman comic it is uh number 59 and the cover on this is a Batman spaceship. And it's a very desirable comic book because it is the first appearance of uh, Deadshot in, Gol in Golden Age comics. Now, it does have issues. Uh, that page right there is torn. And it does affect the story. So, uh, it's rolled you can see that it's not in all that great a shape in this condition this is probably a 200 to 250 dollar comic without the cover now i am going to find a cover for it that is a uh, uh a reproduction cover that i will put on it and i will tell everyone that it is a reproduction cover um and it, there will be no mistaking it because it, it will look way too new but uh, what it does is it just makes the comic look better and it's easier to sell it if you have a reproduction cover. Reproduction cover will probably cost me, I'm hoping, around $15 to $20. Um, one more detective comic. Uh, I did the research on this, but I can't remember what number it is. But this one, the front page is just completely trashed. And it's only the front page. The wrap that goes around that would have been the back page is gone. But the good thing is it doesn't affect the story. Because if you look at the very end and the very last thing, it says right there, the end. 
So I will probably sell this comic. It won't go for a lot of money, but it will probably go for around $15 to $20. So I paid a total of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, probably twelve, fourteen dollars, something like that. And wound up with some really good stuff. This one is kind of a wild card right here. Uh, I don't really know. This is this was an advertisement for um, Lewitt vacuum cleaners, home cleaning made easy, and uh, it was a it was a comic that I am sure they gave away, and kind of just told about their um, told about their product. On the back, it is from Commerce Texas. I gotta figure out how to get that thing to focus. Anyway. Uh, I don't know who drew it. I don't know who did it. And it's kind of a shame because it's really neat. It's a really neat um, comic book. This was done 1950 by the Lewitt Corporation. And it was printed in the United States. So this is kind of a wild card. Uh, I'm probably going to put $15, $20 on it and see what happens. Um, it's kind of a cross collectible because comic book people may want it and also people who collect vacuum cleaners want it. And yes, there are people out there who do collect vacuum cleaners. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's everything I got. And I really appreciate you watching. Um, if, uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, uh, I would love to hear them. You can comment down in the comment section. And I sure appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video.